All right, we are back. AP Calculus, Monday, September 23rd. Write down your date, 9-23-19. Name and date. Um, yeah, it's definition of derivative. We're talking about the AP questions that we have today. Um, generally speaking, AP will ask one of three types of definition problems. I will show you one today, and if you want to see more later, you can always come in and ask me. But this is the, the main one that they use, although they use the other ones kind of frequently too. So if you do want to see some other definitions, um, they are going to be on the pretest. They are going to be on the test. I don't know if they're on the self checks. They might be. Um, we all know that Friday is an in-service day, which means I have to work. You don't. You get to stay home on Friday. Yes. Uh, Wednesday, you guys have seen a trip. You guys are all gone. Yes. Um, maybe use that day to catch or use Friday to catch up on the Wednesday that you missed. Um, you'll have a self check on Thursday. Do you guys want to stay on track and do a self check? Another two self checks on Friday if I do video solutions as well. Yeah, it'll save us a day, one more day to study for the AP test. Okay, let's do it. If you do it in the car, it counts as a study group. Sounds like double dipping. Good. All right, so um, someone read our objective. Yeah, so recognizing it is kind of the hard part. Um, normally, what happens on the like on my test, on the actual AP test, you're like, what is this weird limit fraction thing? And if you ever have that question, you should automatically think, oh, definition of the derivative. So here we go. Um, let me start out with a picture because I always love starting with pictures. It makes things make sense to me at least. Hopefully, it makes things make sense to you as well. So let's assume we have some weird curve. I'm going to call that curve f of x. It's some function. And I'm randomly choosing two points. These were totally random. Here's C, and I'm gonna say, let's go ahead and add some H. So go ahead and write this down. This distance right here, curly brace, whatever. You can even just say that this whole distance right here is H. You don't have to do curly brace. This whole distance is H. I'm adding some distance to my C, and that distance is H. So therefore, this new X coordinate is C plus H. Not our heads, we understand. Pretty easy so far. And then, of course, if I look at their height, the height of C is F of C, the height of C plus H is the F of C plus H. So far, so good. I haven't thrown any curveballs yet. So this is very, very similar to our lesson from Yosemite. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this point closer and closer and closer to this point to get a tangent line. So far, so good. This is the definition of a tangent. In fact, I want to say that the limit as H approaches nothing. As h gets smaller, the slope of the what line gets closer to the slope of the what line. So be thinking about this. I have this cool little animation that I made for all of us. Let's move it right there. All right, so here's my animation. As I drag h smaller and smaller, it gets closer and closer and closer to the actual point of tangency. So it starts over here. What type of line is this, by the way, that intersects at least two times? It's called a... Secant, geo, stego, arrow, secant, we're okay with secant. So it's a secant line, and as h right here approaches zero, as I drag h closer and closer to zero, I can't actually make it zero because then my slope function doesn't work. It approaches the slope of the tangent. That is the definition of the derivative in a picture. Are we all okay with that? Okay, now we need to write it out and do some math. But make sure you're okay with this idea of h is some number, and I'm getting that h closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay, right, so coming back here, let's start with the slope. What is the definition of the average rate of change? And give yourself like a block of room right here where you do need to write something right there. What is the definition of average rate of change? Uh-oh, flashcard. F of, no, F of B minus F of A all over B minus A. That one, okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna treat this guy as my B, this guy as my A in my equation. So what is F of B then? B is F of, F of C plus H, good, minus, C. not quite, minus F of, F of, C. F of C, there it is. That's F of B minus F of A all over C, C plus H minus C. minus C. Okay, that is the slope of that line. So basically it's just the rate. Ah, you're already seeing it. So... What I want to do now is I want to do the limit as h goes to zero. So that space over here to the left, that should now be the limit as h approaches zero of this function. And that, we can rewrite that. 
But let me pause there because this is kind of the key point here. We're starting with this average rate of change. This is the algebraic representation of a line. Average rate of change is algebraically there. Average rate of change is just a line from wherever to wherever, from start to end. That is the definition of average rate of change. Not your head, but you remember this from unit one. So all we're doing here is moving h smaller, and you can see that that's going to change our fraction to something kind of weird. So let's go ahead and simplify this to what Claire had. This is the limit as h approaches 0 of same top, same numerator, f of c plus h, all of that minus f of c. And that's all going to be divided by just h, because c minus c is just 0. This is the definition of the derivative. You have found it. You have derived it. This is f prime of c. You have found f prime of c. There it is. It's the limit as h approaches 0 of all that fraction. Congrats. Ooh. Yeah. All right, so there it is in a graph. There it is in an equation. And here it is in words. As h gets smaller, the slope of the, which line? Not quite. Secant, there it is gets closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. And the key word here to remember, I know that I have you just write down a little bit, and that's because the main thing is that you understand, not that you're focused on writing the words, but the slope of the secant gets closer to the slope of the tangent. All right, so I'm gonna teach you the hot box. And you might snicker and be like, ha ha, hot boxing. Um, the calculus hot box is a method to take the definition of the derivative and actually find what the derivative is. It's something invented by John Wynn and I'm using his hotbox technique. It's a calculus technique. And again, it's one of those techniques where if you mention it to someone else, they'd be like, what are you talking about? It's our cutesy little trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to first find the hotbox, replace that, or find the C, et cetera, et cetera. We're doing these steps. Go ahead and take a chance to, or take a sec to read them. Should be nice and good review for Arrow. Do you remember the hot box? No? OK. And write the new function. All right, so. Can I take a guess at what it is? V plus H? We, yeah. Is the hot box? Does anyone want to try to do this example? So that's like. We're doing this one example, and we're done. Okay. This is a question that they might ask on the AP test. What is this thing? Evaluate this thing, and they'll say, like, 2E e to the power of x. They'll like make you evaluate this thing. So can you just see what number that is right now? It looks kind of complex. It's scary, right? Let's do it. So the whole point of the hotbox is we are going to find the hotbox. The hotbox is the thing with the h in it. So thing with h plus c in it. h plus c. I guess I shouldn't box it, but the h plus c is the important thing. So here it is. Here's your hot box. The whole idea of the hot box is focus only on that box. Ignore everything else. Focus right here. Natural log of 2 plus h. Ignore this minus natural log of 2. Ignore the h. Ignore the limit. You're focusing right there. So our focus is nailed in. That's the point of the hot box. So from here, we're doing step two. What is c? Well, it's c plus h. So c must therefore be 2. There it is. Write it out. c is equal to 2, just as a mental note. It's a thing being added to h. So you want to replace like that, what's inside the parentheses with an x? Yeah, so go ahead and scratch this out. 2 plus h, scribble it out. That is now an x. We're replacing that with an x. So now it says in our hot box, it says natural log of x. So far, so good? Yeah. All right, let's write out our new function. Our function, we can say f of x if you want, or, or you don't even have to write that. f of x is natural log of x. We have, we're done with the hotbox. Now we're going back to normal calculus. We have used the definition of the der derivative to say, hey, we're taking the derivative of natural log of x, and once we take that derivative, we're going to plug in 2. That's what this is saying right here. We did all of this stuff, steps 1 through 4, to get back to our normal routine of saying, OK, good. Now we can just take the derivative of natural log of x and then plug in c once we get that. So the derivative one. No. <laughs> Close. What is the derivative of natural log of x? So let's come out here. What is, I'll come right here, f prime of x. If f of x is natural log, 
What is the definition of the derivative for natural, I shouldn't say definition, what is the derivative of the natural log of x? There it is, 1 over x. 1 over x times 1, because the inner here is x, so dinner is 1. So there it is, f prime of x is just 1 over x. It's the definition of natural log. Definition of natural log, again, if you... Can I guess the answer real quick? Yeah. More than half? Yeah. Again, so if you need d dx of natural log of box, that is equal to 1 over box times dinner. I guess I should do d hyphen inner. d inner. Just as a way to remember. It is in our notes from way back when. And then Gio's right. Now we're going to plug in our C. Our C right here is 2, so I now say this F prime of 2 is equal to 1 over 2, 1 half. Done. The answer here was 1 half. It's pretty cool. Like, let's take a step back and see what we just did. We had this hard thing, this hard fraction that didn't really make sense. You had H's and natural logs everywhere. You didn't know what was going on. And all of a sudden, we found, oh, we're taking the natural log at this point, too, and that is 1 half. Pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Again, this is only one of three definitions that you might see on the AP tests, but there's one of them. So you're just going to be doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's the homework. What is C? What is the function? Take the derivative. Plug in that number. Again, questions? So let's say right here, I mean, take the, we find the half axis of uh, x prime, we also take the x prime right here, right? Yeah. Okay. Everything that's in that box. So basically, that whole top left side, that is going to be your hot box. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. All right, good luck on the homework.